sent away the people. Now I'm going to stop here and say that the word constrained means he compelled. He compelled the disciples to go get in the ship. You see, because Jesus always has a plan. He always has a purpose in everything that he does. So here, he had a plan and a purpose to reveal himself a little more to his disciples. So he constrained them, he compelled them, go get in the ship. And you have to know that what was coming was a time of uncertainty there for the disciples out on that water. I don't know if you've ever been on a large body of water, but uh, been out in the ocean at times when you cannot see land. And it's a time of uncertainty because sometimes the waves are higher than the vessel that you are in. You, you don't have anywhere to go. You don't have anything to hold on to but that vessel and that life jacket there that's with you and those around you. And here we find the disciples as they set sail. But Jesus had a plan. Let's go a little further. Verse 46, and when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea. You see, sometimes God waits till it's dark to do his work. It's in the darkest times of your life often when God reveals himself the most. When he speaks to you, when he leads you to verses of scripture that are powerful and that that they are landmark moments and memorials in your life and your walk with God that you can hold on to and look back on and say, during that dark time in my life, it was there that the Lord came to me. It was there that the Lord ministered to me and revealed himself to me. And it was even. The ship was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land. Verse 48, and he saw them toiling and rowing for the wind was contrary unto them. In other words, the side that they were trying to get to, the wind was blowing in their face and keeping them from approaching the shore that they were headed toward. But see, this was all part of God's plan. He, all had, he had a plan to reveal himself. He had a plan, and oftentimes we find ourselves toiling in the night. We find ourselves struggling in the night. But it's in those times when the Lord comes and speaks to us and reveals himself to us. The wind was contrary, and about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them. You know, the Lord could have come in the first watch. He could have come in the second watch. He could have come in the third watch. And how many times have we been desperate for the Lord and reached out for him and, and, and just sought him to the point where, Lord, I'm desperate, I can't go another day but he's always right on time. You know, it was, uh, well, I don't want to go into that yet. We'll get that point in just a moment. But he waited till the fourth watch of the night. And it says there that he was walking upon the sea. There are many times in the darkness that we're toiling, he walks upon the waters, the troubled waters in our life, and comes to us and brings comfort and hope. It says, and he would have passed by them, but when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. It goes on to say, And he went up into the, uh, unto them in the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. You see, it was at that moment in time that Jesus wanted to reveal the miracle working power, the tangible working power that he had unto his disciples. If we will just stay in the ship, if we will just stay in the church, if we will just live for God, I promise you, when troubled waters and darkness come into your life, he will come and walk on those waters. And he will come and enter the ship with you. And the waters will be stilled in your life. It goes on to say in verse uh, 52. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Because they had just left shore where uh, 5,000 had been fed plus women and children. And they had gathered up baskets. And, and 
it says here that that miracle, they considered not the miracle the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship straightway, they knew him. The purpose in all of this was that they would know him. There in that last verse, oh, what Paul said in Philippians 3 and 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in fellowship with his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. His purpose in our life for the darkness, for the troubled waters, for the toiling, for the winds, for all the the struggles that we go through, is he wants us to know him. He wants us to understand his ways, not to seek his hand of provision, salvation, and deliverance, but to seek his face of love, his face. Because if we see his face, his hands will be working in our life. You see, it says in Isaiah 55, in verse 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. There are things that the Lord is doing even in this very moment right now that we cannot understand. But what he wants for us is just to trust him, to lean upon him, to pray and seek his face and draw near to him. And go to the word of God and let him speak to our heart and let him bring comfort and healing to our life. He wants us to know him. We can go to the book of Job and we see a man through the many chapters in the book of Job believed to be the oldest book in the Bible. We find a man that is trying to learn about himself. You see, he was a a fine man, upright, served the Lord did the things he was supposed to, but when calamity came into his life, his life just went into a tailspin. But it was through all of those chapters that we read about the process of Job's life. And I think all of us can look in that book and find ourselves somewhere in the book of Job and see the struggles that he went through and how the Lord ministered to him and how the Lord helped him and eventually God blessed him as a result of his devotion and his faithfulness. But he struggled. He struggled with doubt. He struggled with his peers. He struggled with many things as we read that book. But if we go to Job chapter 38 in verse 1, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. You see, Job's life was a whirlwind. It was wind contrary unto the direction that he wanted to go. But it was in that wind, that whirlwind that was blowing in his life, that was contrary to what he wanted, it's there that the voice of the Lord spoke. It's there that God ministered to Job. I had the privilege of uh, listening to a message, a short message yesterday from Uh, Jeff Arnold, and he said so many amazing things. And here he was talking about Job, and it's really true. We have to just believe that God knows what he's doing. As our pastor always says, have faith in God. Because if we have faith in God, no matter what comes our way, we're going to come through it on the other side. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Great calamity came to Job's life, but in the end, he was blessed beyond measure more than he could ever imagine. We can go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. It says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Now, I want to pause right here and say that sometimes we stir up ourselves, but sometimes God chooses the whirlwind to stir us up himself. So we must look introspectively and as Job did, find the things in his life that are contrary to what God desires and wants for us. We must use this time to look into our own life and really see what matters. Really see what we need to remove from our life. It's given us plenty of time to think 
and ponder the things of our life, our family, the things that are important to us. You know, you may be struggling today and you may uh, be in need today, but I promise you, Jesus knows exactly where you are at at this very moment. And if you will seek his face in the whirlwind in your life that's swirling around you, he will speak calm to the waters. The winds will die down and his voice will come to you if you will trust in him. It goes on to say, if we stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands, as Paul told Timothy, verse 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God wants us to have peace in our mind today and know that he is on the throne. He is on the throne. We can go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. I'm talking about the ways of the Lord this morning. The ways of the Lord are amazing. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. You see, God knows the end result that he's striving for. He knows the end from the beginning. He wants to put things in motion to accomplish and achieve the will that he has for all of our lives. And it is his pleasure to do this. So if we will trust the process, if we will lean upon him during this time of need, if we will seek his face and trust in him, I promise you, he will not lead you astray. And finally, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. It says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. I already read that one. Verses 6 and 7. But I tell you today, Jesus knows the end from the beginning. We can go to separate, uh, several stories in Scripture where... It looked like an impossibility, but God was prepared for that situation. We can go to the demoniac at Gadara. It looked impossible. It looked like there was no hope for this person. But in the end, it says he was clothed and in his right mind. To those around him, it looked impossible. But somewhere, somebody prepared and brought a change of clothes. Could it have been Jesus knowing that that man was going to be healed and in his right mind, and he's going to need a set of clothes. You see, God knows the end from the beginning. He was right on time for Lazarus. They came to him and said, Lord, you took too long. Why did you wait so long? He's dead. And Lord, you can't do anything now because he stinks. In other words, his body was decomposing. But Jesus strolls on the scene and with that powerful voice, says, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth and came alive right there before their eyes. You see, the Lord is always right on time. There may be some things in your life today that may look like they are dying or dead. But I tell you, the Lord can revive. The Lord can bring life to those things in your life that you have given up on. Because he's always right on time. These are the ways of the Lord. The disciples' faith would fail whenever he was crucified. They went back to their old professions. They went back to the fishing boat, to the nets, to the, to the ways that they made a living. You see, they thought it didn't quite work out the way they thought it would. And they're trying to find their way after his body was put in the grave. But the Lord is right on time. And on the third day, he rose again. And he showed himself alive, the scripture says, after many infallible proofs. The Lord knew the end from the beginning. He wants to work a miracle. That's how Jesus operates. There's a need that arises. He would go about in the streets finding the needs, or the needs would come to him. He would do the miracle there in front of people's eyes. Then, after the miracle took place, a crowd would gather, and then he would proclaim 
the truths to the people around. And I tell you today, the ways of the Lord are even working in every life that's under the sound of my voice today. His hand is working in your life. If you will not seek his hand today, but if you will seek his face, I promise you, if you trust in him, if you lean upon him, his peace that passes all understanding, the Bible says, will comfort your hearts and your minds because he is the prince of peace. He is the one that will bring healing and hope to your life today. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday school lesson today. And we're going to close in prayer. And our prayer is that God would minister to you right now. Lord, we come humbly before you and believe, God, that your anointing and your power will go forth right now, Jesus. I speak peace to the lives in need today. Those that are suffering in their hearts and their minds, not knowing what tomorrow will hold, Lord. They may need healing in their bodies, God, but ultimately you are in control. And I believe, Lord, right now that you can do a miracle even where everyone is at in their place, in their home, that you can work in the lives of the believers today. Lord, reveal yourself as we seek your face, as we trust in you and lean upon you because you are 